If you actually clicked on this video to learn how to steal art with AI, I sincerely hope you stub your toe going to the toilet in the middle of the night. Now, AI is better than ever at generating art, and as you can see, the AI models were only able to achieve this thanks to the millions of artworks that was used to train it. But since it is able to generate this very high quality artworks, it raises the question about whether this is art stealing or not. So yeah, today I am going to give you guys a closer look on the problem surrounding AI generated art, especially dealing with the concept of stealing and how malicious people can use AI to modify or steal original artworks. I'll also be going in depth sharing and clarifying to what exactly is possible with AI and what is not. I know that explaining how one could steal art with AI seems counterintuitive, however it is imperative that we understand how it all works in order to prevent it in the coming future. Recently there is this TikTok that blew up basically faked a workflow for making a completely AI generated person, I'll link it in the description as a reference, and it was shocking to see a lot of people to believe believe that it was real, and this just made it even more obvious that the general public is not very well informed when it comes to the rapidly changing AI field, especially in this year. With many people just referring to whatever is fantastical enough as AI no matter what it is, not just in the realm of AI art. But today, I'll only be talking about issues surrounding AI generated art instead of AI in general because this topic without a shadow of a doubt needs more attention, and I believe showing you the ways in which AI can steal art through manipulation is a good start. Being aware of these things and being able to identify them so that you can more accurately report those who use AI to exploit artists' work is important because many artists are already being affected without even knowing. Currently, there is an extremely controversial debate about whether using an artist's name in the input text prompt for an image generating AI is considered stealing or not. At first, this may look relatively harmless, but what this really deals with is how the artist's name is associated with a certain style, quality, and details by the AI. When their name is used as the input for the AI to generate an image, it can potentially recreate identical qualities produced by the artist, but at the same time, it isn't one-to-one -one identical. Uh, you may be asking, why is using an artist's name in an AI even a thing? Well, that can be explained when you look at the data set that's used to train text-to-image AIs, as sometimes original copyrighted work of art by independent artists or corporations can be found in the data set. The copyrighted art piece will include the name of the artist as a tag alongside other descriptive tags about the artwork, which means when someone input their name into the AI, the AI will spit back art similar to their style. Carla Ortiz, an illustrator based in San Francisco, claims to have found her original work in the data set that was used to train stable diffusion, a popular text-to-image AI. They have since been raising awareness about this issue because even though the AI-generated art is not perfectly identical to the original artworks, it is undeniably trained with their art as an example. However, the AI could have learned to synthesize the resulting image by referencing only 10% of an artist's work, or even perhaps as little as one millionth of a percent of the artist's work. And when we look at it this way, it becomes easy to see the counter argument. It is very difficult to point fingers at the AI or the person using it and claim that both are engaging in art thievery, as the AI is pretty much referencing others' art, like a human would do when creating an art piece. Take this as an example, someone drawing in the style of Van Gogh, but instead of Starry Night, they painted a starry day instead. Would you count this as stealing Van Gogh's artwork? Of course not, because they drew the piece from scratch themselves as a tribute to a well-known piece of art with their own original twist. So similarly, when an AI does this, is the AI AI stealing a person's art or is it simply referencing their art? What makes everything exponentially worse is that sometimes people use the AIs that are trained on copyrighted art to generate images solely for commercial purposes. It is quite common to see people selling their AI generated art as NFTs and turning a profit off the AI generations, or even win art competitions in some cases. Some of the art generated for this purpose could for example use the name Greg Rakowski, who is a digital artist and has also made his media presence known voicing his discontent with AI-generated art, especially when the generated art is imitating living artists, since their current livelihood is based off their artistic talent. There are some suggestions proposed such as providing copyrights for the artistic style, however some people argue that copywriting a certain style is a little ridiculous. That being said, it is understandable to not want your art that you spend not only hours of your life on but also creative energy making to be used in a dataset that is used to train an AI so that it can generate art in less than 15 seconds. 
icons that almost perfectly imitates your style. While I could sit here go on and on about whether an AI image generator that was trained on copyrighted images counts as copyright infringement or not, and also the complicated issue about who owns the generated images and the ethical aspects of all of this, so on and so on, this is only the tip of the iceberg. If you thought what came before counted as exploiting original art with AI, oh boy, you are in for a treat, as the real abuse and exploitation only starts now. AI is undeniably amazing tool, but in any world that doesn't look like this, a tool as useful as a knife can be misused. It is scarily common to see someone's artwork get stolen and sold by a nefarious third party. Whether the art is being used for crappy unofficial merch or a fake print sale, many artists have resigned to putting watermarks on all of their work so that people can no longer easily steal the art and have to at least put in more effort than right click and save. You probably already know this, but unfortunately AI image in painting has made watermark removal unbelievably easy. Because of this, some artists have gone even further covering the whole piece of artwork in a watermark. However, this does not stop the AI as it can regenerate the parts of the image that are covered by the watermark, simply by masking the watermark and painting over it. While all of these is just blatantly stealing someone's artwork, removing watermarks is by no means something new so I am not going to go further in depth with it. But with the help of AI, it can now be done in mere seconds. In most text-to-image synthesizers, there is this type of function which allows you to reference an image and do other things based on that. This includes but is not limited to variation generations which generate variations similar to the referenced image or image-to-image -image, which is using text to guide the AI into generating new content made based from the reference image. Between these two, there are major differences in how these functions are built under the hood, but generally you can make an AI produce new artwork from pre-existing work of art or even just sketches. I've been seeing a lot of great examples online of people sharing how they have used text-to-image AIs to improve their workflow for creating and illustrating, and this is what I really hope to see the functions in AI are used for. But unfortunately, that is not always the case. There was an incident where a person took an unfinished piece of art from a Korean illustrator called AT while they were streaming on Twitch, and read it through novel AI's stable diffusion image-to-image -image function to complete the unfinished artwork. They then posted the generated art onto their Twitter claiming that it was their work, later worsening the situation by claiming that AT's now finished piece of art was actually based on their work, demanding credit from AT because it was their art. It was a very absurd situation where I even thought it was satire at one point because they put hashtag novel AI diffusion in a tweet and did a Q&A themselves talking about how their art skill is self-taught which is just unfathomably hilarious. In that case, people actually cared and the art thief got banished to the shadow realm through a well-deserved report bombardment. However, those in the future who do a better job post-processing the stolen artwork or make the decision to steal from a smaller artist have a much better chance at getting away with it. So here are some quick tips on how to determine if someone's artwork is AI generated or not. First, look at the edges. AI struggles to make clean or coherent cuts most of the time. Second, find complicated patterns. AI currently is still very poor at synthesizing highly detailed patterns, or even small details in general, like symbols or text. Third, check the image resolution. Usually the resolution of art drawn by a person will be much higher than 1024 times 1024. It may depend on the resolution that the artist chose, but most of the time they would output their artwork in a much higher resolution like 3K or 4K, which compared to the current raw output from a text to image AI synthesizer, it would just be very obvious that art generated in that high resolution will not be AI generated. Well, image upscaling does exist, but real art should be extremely clear and crisp on the edges, while upscale images have noisy outlines. Sometimes Sometimes they even have very noticeable artifacts left over at detailed parts of the art. Fourth, if the image contains a face, then the eyebrows and the hair are very good giveaways for determining if a piece of art is made by an AI or not. So check the hair strands. If they look normal, then great. Another facial feature to look at is their eyes, more specifically the pupils, as AI struggles to keep them circular. It also fails when synthesizing fingers and hands, because just like humans, AI suck at drawing hands. But all those previously mentioned giveaways can easily be fixed in Photoshop or any post-processing software by someone who is proficient with it or just proficient at drawing in general. However, having said that, please don't go out on Twitter and start being a douchebag accusing artists left and right about using AI-generated images. And for the love of humanity, don't start gatekeeping what is and what isn't real art. There are many examples of textbook Twitter drama where someone exposes themselves as a self-absorbed gatekeeper with a savior complex. Like the situation here where
where someone accuses a Japanese artist of posting AI-generated artworks because it contains some of the qualities that an AI-generated image would possibly have, and claim that the artist is hiding the truth. Of course, the artist easily refuted this claim with undeniable proof that they drew it themselves, and everyone profusely apologizes after the debacle, but this just goes to show how hurtful and destructive false accusations can truly be. The author of the tweet put it best when they said, Imagine acting like you're on the side of supporting artists just to make rude demoralizing comments to actual artists. <sighs> And let me be clear, there is nothing wrong with using AI to improve your creative process when working, so for future references, try to be a little nicer on the internet. Then of course, there is the Dream Booth fine tuning method, which I already covered in an older video that you can watch here, where you only need 5 to 20 images of a subject in order to further fine tune a pre existing AI, and afterwards it will be able to generate the subject with the use of a single input prompt. To get a better explanation, check out my Dream Booth video or a more detailed explanation on their official paper. But to quickly show you how it works, you can take just 5 to 20 images of any fictional character, apply the Dream Booth method, then voila, you can create whatever image of that fictional fictional character you want, doing whatever you want in contexts that differ completely from what was originally fed into the AI. And not just limited to subjects, it can also learn art styles such as the cyberpunk art style, arcane art style, spider-verse art style, archer art style, just to name a few. All I can say about this is the function has already ravaged the R34 community. Artists probably had to say goodbye to the insane money that they used to get paid from drawing furry art or any niche you could think of. And to be fair, the majority of people probably will not care about this, but it is a sign to other artists that AI could start damaging their source of income by taking away the possible commissions they would get. After a director called Karen Chen used Dolly 2 to create the cover for one of the issues of Cosmopolitan magazine, she shared the statement on Twitter I think the natural reaction is to fear that AI will replace human artists. Certainly that thought crossed my mind, but the more I use Dolly 2, the less I see this as a replacement for humans, and the more I see it as tools for humans to use, it is like an instrument to play. But I personally believe that this could only apply to cases where artistic merit is greatly respected and funds are not a major concern, while also the bar for mastering artistic creation is lowered dramatically from drawing from sketch to clicking buttons and prompting. Your everyday commissioned artists on Twitter or Deviant art will be the ones to feel the ripple effects of the new AI capabilities the hardest. They would definitely be losing clients since many would prefer using the much cheaper and faster AI. Japanese anime artists have a similar reaction where in this article, some of them strongly voiced the concern that their jobs in the future will actually be replaced by AIs. I also did a poll with you guys on YouTube and we got a roughly 50-50 split on whether AI will replace or steal jobs from human artists. On the other hand, it makes original characters easier to copy between images. Good artists possess the ability to copy another's particular style or character. However, it is pretty much illegal to use it commercially unless it is for parody purposes or licensed. In the future though, Dream Booth and Dream Artists could be the perpetrator that violates it because of its ease of use, but hopefully we won't see that happen. Of course, Disney is not going to be happy about this new development in AI. Finally, it seems important to mention that under current US copyright law, images that are generated through text-to-image synthesizers are technically not subject to copyright protection. This means that all images that are generated using an AI can be taken and used by a third party completely unaffiliated with the person who originally generated it. This raises a lot of questions and red flags pertaining to the ownership of these AI-generated images, the possibility of people reselling others' AI-generated art such as NFTs or prints, and whether in incorporating AI into the creation of an otherwise human built piece affects the protection it will have under copyright law or not. On the other hand, in Japan, only if the images generated are identical to an original artwork, then the copyright owner of that original artwork may infringe on copyright. The legal area only gets deeper as you explore it since the ability of what AI can do has only been increasing since this year. What's even crazier is that this only touches on text-to-image synthesizing. There are still a dozen of other AI technologies that still need to be discussed. Trending on ArtStation is probably one of the most popular terms to use in the era of mid-journey and stable diffusion version 1. Similar to using the term Unreal Engine back in the days of VQGAN, these two terms contain a strong influence over the quality of AI-generated images because of its association with high-quality images that they were tagged with in the training data. It is without a doubt that these artworks made by real human artists were taken without permission to be trained in these big boy AI image generating models, since it was mostly crawled and collected into the now infamous Leon 5B data which many artists hate. In the current days, Stable Diffusion version 2 doesn't incorporate 
incorporate any sensitive tags that refer to real artists since they have aggressively filtered out images real artists make. Trending on ArtStation and drawn by blah 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 would not work anymore as of Stable Diffusion version 2.1, while Midjourney still doesn't really give a damn. Some very knowledgeable and influential people like Marcus Brownlee confuses Dolly 2 with Stable Diffusion 2, which also shows how hard it is to find accurate information. Dolly 2 was trained on a Yahoo Flickr dataset that was used in Dolly 1, and it is under the Creative Commons. Later on, OpenAI even purchased a license from Shutterstock to train Dolly 2 even more with their images. Nowhere was Dolly 2 near Leon 5B, well as far as they have published of course, but that is why Dolly 2 images look very stock imagey. While these small details are usually what the public don't know and don't bother to dig deep enough to understand it, with the current image quality that AI models can now generate, a lot of these AI art has made its way onto PixV or ArtStation, places where human artists would post their art to get recognition and discussion online. So right now there is a protest going on on ArtStation where all the images trending are a big no AI logo with captions demanding ArtStation to remove all AI generated art off the platform, but also not to have their art scraped by whatever data sets. While I am not here to discuss the controversy and what the platform should do, but some tweets have actually caught my attention and I feel like it will confuse the general public even more. There was this post that was trending where the author claimed the AI image generators are broken because of AI prompters ripping art from ArtStation without permission and because of the trending protest artwork. There were even tweets about how it reached Midjourney's training data so the generator would produce similar features with the NTAI sign. Well, I hated to break it to these people but that is not really how AI works. Using real art for training is definitely the correct part but breaking the generator is something out of the picture. Training requires time, especially a very long time if you start from from scratch, sometimes even up to a few days for a text-to-image model. There is no live internet crawling or data collecting, so something that just came up on the trending page of our station is not directly ripped off right away. People usually filter out the dataset before they use it for training too, so not every single image is used in the Leon 5P dataset. Leon 5P is also a text image paired dataset, which means all the images have a text description paired with the image. So unless your art is labeled or someone labeled your art, it is unlikely likely for your image to be very quickly picked up by the crawling. These tweets are just mostly feel-good media stunts that people make to enable others and to fuel the hatred. While there may be misinterpretation somewhere, but I guess sometimes some people just love the controversial narrative over the truth which lies underneath. But as usual, this video will probably be out of date in like 3 months, maybe less, so things will definitely be constantly changing. Please be aware of that, dear viewers. What's even worse is that people nowadays will not just only be after some cool art but also your browsing data and personal information. For you to protect yourself in this modern age of internet, today's sponsor NordVPN provides you with safe internet browsing, workaround for region locks, and most importantly, protections against cybersecurity threats. Maybe one day you walked past a really nice looking coffee shop and decided to do your work there so you bought a nice cup of coffee and took out your laptop to connect to the internet. You then realized that there are a lot of free open Wi-Fi so you just chose any of them to connect. And boom! Anything you browse on the internet from now on is very likely to be spied on aka be vulnerable to the men in the middle attack. This means malicious individuals use fake networks to intercept any sensitive data you pass through the public Wi-Fi. But if you still really want to use the Wi-Fi, NordVPN got you covered. NordVPN will encrypt all your online traffic so that your internet data cannot be understood by these people or even ISPs. On top of that, I also find it really convenient to hop around my virtual location to watch shows when I'm on vacation. And from my personal experience, NordVPN is probably one of the smoothest VPN out there. No lags or internet speed reduction whatsoever. Really just a service that I appreciate I have. So if you would like to support me while also using their service, feel free to use the coupon code BICLOUD or go to nordvpn.com slash BICLOUD to get a two-year plan plus some amazing bonus gift with a pretty handsome discount. And lastly, thank you guys so much for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Lascellias, Chris Ledoux, Sean, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. If you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord and ask there. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next one.